Today, we're gonna to be jumping into some of the new AI features that are rolling out for Zoho WorkDrive. To be honest, I'm really excited about these as we use WorkDrive internally. And one of these actually solves a big problem that we have internally that I've been trying to build some custom stuff with tools like Replit, et cetera, to solve for us. And I might not have to anymore. So I'm extra excited. My energy's high today. We're feeling good. Let's jump right on in. So we're gonna break this into two parts. First one's gonna be about Zia Hubs, which is the thing I'm really stoked about. And then the next one are going to be some general AI tools that are coming down the pipeline as well. So what is a Zia Hub and why does it matter? So a Zia Hub inside of WorkDrive is essentially kind of like a team folder. It's almost how you think about this. It's a place where I can log various types of content in one environment. Now, what is this going to do at the end of the day? I really like the way that Manny said this here. He's the CEO at Zoho. Essentially, you have all of this business data, but a lot of it is text-based, right? It's like written documents. Like in the world of Zoho, it might be like a best practice document on running a mail merge from Zoho CRM, right? Maybe we have some special sauce and some standard ways that we like to do things. The problem is, especially for knowledge businesses like Zanata is, right? We do Zoho consulting. You have so much of this stuff and it gets really hard to use it. Like our constant challenge is we have Zoho Learn, we have all this stuff in there, but at the end of the day, it's just not super accessible. You end up with hundreds of articles and that's not even taking into account like call recordings, meeting notes, right? All this different stuff that you have, but effectively isn't usable. So the idea here with the Zia Hub is saying, hey, put all that stuff in one place. Now, <laughs> easier said than done, right? There's gonna be some effort that would go into like consolidating everything into one of these hubs. But then once you have everything in a hub, now you can just use an LLM chat interface to interact with it, right? And get instant answers from that data that you already have. So like here we can see as like a sales user, I have this hub and it has all these different images in it for the, in this case. Now, again, I like written content more than images, but still shares the point. Or maybe you have these things about car manufacturers, who's selling the most, who's selling the least, any growing trends, right? But again, do you want to open up 10 tabs and look at every single one of these graphs? Or do you just want to ask it, hey, which company sold the most cars this year? It's going to then look at all those images, look at all those spreadsheets, all those Word documents, and just answer the question for you, right? And give you information that's already stored inside of the hub. One of the things I really like about this, and they demo it here, is, hey, here's the sources, <laughs> right? So you're not just using the AI. In our case, if it delivers a high level of like a best practice for a mail merge, well, I still want the user to then kind of click through and see the full document. It does kind of a two-pronged approach where it's doing a summary and a write-up for you, just pulling directly from all of that information. But then it's also a search tool, right? That's then surfacing, hey, here's what I found and here's where I found it, right? With links to just click directly through and actually get access to that raw data inside of Zoho WorkDrive. So a lot of different use cases for this, like they show one here for support where it's like, hey, what are upload limitations in WorkDrive? Boom, here they are. Here again is where I found it, right? So step after step, you're getting that summary you're also getting the source attribution of the information. And I'll tell you, that is really, really important. These LLM tools, they do have a bit of a tendency to fill in the blanks, let's say, right? So if it thinks that a certain piece of information is important, but it's not in the source material, it can sometimes just find something, right? And it'll quote it on a best practice or a norm that it sees online. That does get a little bit dangerous. One of the things with these Zia hubs is they are kind of, you know, I'd imagine on Zoho's side, a bit constrained, right? So they're probably taught via prompts to like minimize external sourcing of data. But as you start to use these as a bit of a pro tip, I would recommend making sure that you look at the sources of the data to just validate, make sure that things are accurate. Before we go further in this, I do wanna ask if you find it useful so far, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment with how you would envision using these tools internally. I've got my own plan and we're gonna start using them soon here, but I'm always curious to hear about how other people are using these types of tools. And if you need any help setting this up or maybe handling some of that data ingestion, right? Answering the question of, how am I actually gonna get all this data into the hub? Just head on over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting. We would love to help. Outside of the sales and support, that kind of last use case that they're showing here is, hey, 
maybe we do like a, a monthly town hall internally, right? And we want to take the MP4, some type of audio recording of that and upload it. Maybe somebody missed one of these. They could just come in and say, hey, from that last meeting, what are some of the challenges that we were thinking we might have? It's going to then actually listen through or read the transcript, really, but effectively listen through those audio recordings and give you an answer, right? So again, you're not having to try to click through and find the perfect part of that audio recording. This is one of the components I'm probably most excited about. Now, whenever you're doing like audio video recordings, you do have to think about storage limits inside a work drive. They are very high and adding more storage is at a very affordable rate. But of course, it's going to take more storage than just like PDFs. One of the things I would think about here is like at Sonata, we have so many digital meetings with clients, right? With our sales team, with our consulting team. And sometimes it's tough for us because maybe we want to give some type of coaching, want to figure out the next area of growth for a particular consultant. Well, you might only see those things by going through a bunch of audio recordings. And it takes a lot of time, right? So even just at a beginning to say like, hey, check out these recordings, is there anything that stands out as something that I should go and dig into further as potential feedback? This tool isn't going to like create that feedback for me, just being honest, probably not going to be that good. But if it can give me some of the themes and maybe a timestamp or two where I could then go in and explore it further and make my own judgment, saves a bunch of time, gives me some things that I might not otherwise find, or make something that honestly would be kind of like time prohibitive. Like there's no way we could listen to like, five recordings a week for every consultant on one hour meetings. So it's just literally too much time to go in and do that. This could help us kind of focus in on more specific things that we might not otherwise have the time and energy to find the old fashioned way. So really, really excited for Zia Hubs. You can probably tell this solves a lot of problems, especially again, selfishly for companies like ours, where there's a lot of knowledge and best practices that are generally just really hard to actually use. Next up, it's kind of a handful of other auxiliary AI tools here coming for WorkDrive. A lot of these are going to be super, super useful. And one thing I always do like to note, all your data with this is staying internal to Zoho, which is kind of nice. Like, I'm not the biggest conspiracy theorist. I don't think that, like, when I upload a, a mail merge best practice document to ChatGPT that, like, I'm really giving up too much special sauce there. Like, I doubt that that's that valuable to them. But if you do have anything that is super private for you, it is all going to stay on Zoho's servers, which is kind of just a benefit from a security perspective. Handful of these that are coming out, file summarization. Again, I love saving time. Give me a big document. Give me a paragraph of like maybe some sections that I should read into further. Comment translation, this is really cool, especially for global teams. If you have different team members and maybe you have different primary languages, somebody could leave a comment in language A and it'll translate the language B, right? So just allowing people to communicate in their most preferred language is gonna actually improve the quality of communication. Again, the linchpin there is that the translation is good. So put an asterisk, you wanna do some testing on this. And then content creation here. So they've got whole drafts of documents, right? Which is huge. We use ChatGPT for this if we realize that maybe we're missing a certain policy document. It'll draft up V1, and then we'll go in and make a bunch of adjustments to it. If I could just do that natively in WorkDrive, I would, right? So we're going to try that out. Image generation. I don't see a ton of enterprise value for this being candid, but maybe like stock images and things like that that otherwise you'd have to go pay Shutterfly for whatever it may be. You can just do that here. Do be careful when it comes to image generation. I know this is an area of AI that copyright gets really important. So be a little bit careful on that if it's super important. Comment refinement, right? So write a quick comment, say make it better, <laughs> right? Love that. And then cover image creation. So if you were doing like a proposal, right, you might ask it to create like a multimedia homepage or cover page for that document. Next up here, full audio and video transcription. Love this. I mean, again, like we do a lot of meetings and it's impossible to watch all of them to be able to give people feedback. So being able to do a transcription and then think about this, move it over to a Zia hub where now that transcription is searchable by an AI tool. That's the silver bullet, right? That's exactly what I need to continue our improvement loop with a lot of our employees that engage in a lot of meetings, right? 
just saves me a ton of time and allows me to be a better manager and leader and give better feedback without having to spend 30 hours a week watching video recordings. So really excited about these. We're big on work drive internally. We've moved everything over like a couple years ago and and more and more of our clients are doing the same. I mean, it's a really, really great platform and storage is extremely cost competitive compared to other options. So well worth considering even before the release of these AI tools, but getting even better now that they are coming to market. So with that, I think we're ready to wrap up here for today. As always, a free way to help us out is to like and subscribe down below if you did find the video useful. Leave me a comment with how you'd plan on using these internally or maybe any questions that you have about best practices and how we might use them for us. And if you need any help setting this up or again with that data ingestion process, because getting all the data in here automatically is going to be the linchpin to really make these useful, just head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting. We'd love to talk about how we can help. My name is Tyler Colt and I will see you next time.